Hey everybody, what's up? Um, it's been a while since I made a video um, for the channel. I've gotten actually quite a few requests from people um, asking how to make your own homemade water manometer for balancing and synchronizing the throttle bodies on a Crossfire 305 or 350. Um, you can, I mean, they're super easy to make. Um, I mean, really all you need is a $3 yardstick and about 20 feet or so of uh, clear quarter inch vacuum tubing, or not vacuum tubing, clear tubing. Um, I say 20 feet because it's better to end up a little bit long than short. Um, the length of the tubing does not affect, obviously does not affect your vacuum reading. Um, the reason you can't use, because I've been asked this as well, the reason you can't use a vacuum gauge, and I've seen, I've seen vacuum gauges measure in inches of water. Um, I know for a fact they're not accurate. Um, most vacuum gauges or any vacuum gauge I've seen is calibrated for inches of mercury, which is about 13 and a half times denser than water, therefore heavier. That's why water a water manometer is used. It's a lot more sensitive to fluctuations in vacuum and pressure for that matter. Um, but anyway, um, really all you need, and this, I made this thing probably, Jesus, at least 20 years ago, and I've been toting it around ever since, but I just used an old yardstick. I screwed it to just this old piece of wood, and I ran my vacuum, or my, uh, my tubing, down one side, underneath the bottom, and back up the other side. It doesn't matter um, where your water ends up when you fill, you know, you're gonna fill your, uh, your tube, the end of one of your tubes here with water. Um, however you get it in there, a syringe, um, you know, trickle it in out of a cup, whatever, however you choose to do it. Uh, as long as the water ends up in there and there's no air pockets or air bubbles in it. So your, uh, both of your channels level out and you get the same reading on each tube respective to your yardstick. Um, as you can see, uh, the last time I balanced my throttle bodies with this, uh, this homemade one, I took a little marker and just put a mark where my channels were leveled out. When you balance your throttle bodies, like I said in one of my earlier videos, um, you're going to you're going to do one throttle body at a time. You always start with your driver's side, uh, the rear throttle body, and once once you basically start with a level, both of your uh, your uh, your tubing, the water in your tubing level on both sides. You make your mark, hook up your one vacuum tube to your rear throttle body. It's probably gonna be, you know, um, somewhere in the area to one or two inches of water as soon as you hook it up. Um, and then you're going to, from there, um, since you started here at zero, assuming, you're going to basically adjust it, raise your, essentially turn your idle screw in, your minimum air screw on your rear throttle body in until you see a six inch rise in water um, so once that's done then you disconnect this tube that you hooked up to your rear throttle body and go ahead and hook it up to the center port on your front or passenger side throttle body which is called the slave do the same thing with your balance screw um, your balance screw is the um, <clears throat> The screw that's on the linkage, it's factory welded. <clears throat> and like I said, after 40 years, I'm sure people have screwed with these things, trying to adjust them like carburetors and uh, trying to play hot rod and shade tree mechanic with them. Um, but you're going to adjust that one up to six inches of vacuum, six inches of water. Once that's done, you can leave this tube hooked up to your, your front throttle body, take your other tube, and hook it up to your rear throttle body, the center port. It should draw it pretty close to even um, back to where you started from. So if this is your mark, it should pull it back to where you started from, if, if your throttle bodies are equal. 
they 99 out of 100 times don't end up perfectly equal, even if you draw each, each one to six inches of water. That's why I like to, and like I said, the factory service manual doesn't tell you this. It just says to, you know, pull each side up to six inches of water and call it good. Um, but what I found works best is for that little, you know, quarter to half inch just to get them even, you know, tuned, finer tuned than they probably ever were from the factory. Um, you know, you hook each of these tubes up to this, each center port on the rear of your throttle body at the same time. It'll pull it down. It'll probably be maybe a half an inch, three quarters of an inch off sometimes, depending on if your linkage is worn out or you have worn throttle bushings, throttle shaft bushings. And you're going to go ahead and zero it. Um, I mean, it barely takes breathing on the screw to, to zero them out and get them 100% perfect, but that's how it's done. Um, you know, like I said, I haven't used this one in a very long time. Um, I usually use my, um, this Dwyer here. Um, this thing is probably 40 years old almost. Um, you know, it's, uh, I use this one quite a bit and I mean, actually it's the only one I use. Let me rephrase that. But you can also pick up, uh, from Amazon or anywhere online, really, um, this digital manometer. Um, it measures in inches of mercury, inches of water, um, pressures, um, and also pressure differential. But I've found that even after attempting to balance the throttle bodies with the digital manometer, I go and hook up the... Um, the water manometer and it's usually off by about an inch um usually your cheaper i mean you know cheaper electronics cheaper water manometer or cheaper manometers rather they're not accurate uh like you think they would be or, or they probably should be um i've found there's nothing more accurate than doing it uh quote unquote the mechanical way uh with water um you know water's stays the same weight regardless um you know and it's, it's just a lot more accurate um i guess in a pinch you could use a digital one the, i mean they average like 35 to 45 maybe 50 bucks but um i mean every now and again you can find these these old dwyers online um you know like i said i don't even know if they still make them i never bothered to look because i've had this one for over 20 years but, uh, you know, getting back, um, you know, it's, it's super easy to do. Just, I mean, you could even, you can even put a, uh, you know, your yard stick on a piece of cardboard, uh, as long as it's secured. And, you know, like I said, 20 feet or so of quarter inch clear tubing. Um, I mean, it, it helps to add a little bit of food color in there, food coloring, just to make it a little bit easier to see when you're doing it. Um, you know, but that's pretty much it. Um, it's, uh, and it's, it's by far the most accurate way to do it. Um, I think, I mean, I built this one, geez, probably 20, 15, 20 years ago. And I think I got $4 and in, in stuff in it. You know, I did, uh, I think these are from Harbor Freight, these little, these little retainers, these tubing retainers. I think they're made for wire looms or something, but I mean, it was like a dollar fifty for like 50 of them or something. I just screwed those in there just to hold the tubing straight. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. And, um, you know, there's, you can make them as long or as short as you want them, as long as you have probably a, a 10 inch range to work with. Um, because if you, uh, you know, if you don't have much space in your column in each tube and you go and put the, put one of your tubes on there and it's idling maybe a hundred RPMs higher than you think it might be or whatever, it'll suck the water right into the throttle body through the vacuum port. So, I mean, I, I, I like it a little bit longer. That way I can play with it a little bit. Um, it doesn't have to be set every time, no matter where the, the water in the channels or in each tube ends up and it's leveled out, that's where you make your mark and that's your zero. And you start from there. Uh, so I hope that clears things up. Um, if you guys have any more questions or anything, or see, have anything you want to see, um, how to's or anything like that, uh, feel free to leave a comment, um, you know, subscribe to the channel. I know this crossfire stuff is, um, you know, it's few and far between as far as people that know, know how to work on them. And, um, you know, it's just, uh, 
I figured I'd, uh, I'd offer any kind of any help or assistance that I can give because uh, I like seeing them out there. I like seeing them online. I like seeing people driving them. You know, it's it's cool to see them in a world of LS swaps. You know, it's I like rare, uncommon stuff. But um, anyway, um, you know, like I said, if you got any questions, anything you want to see uh, from here on out, you know, feel free to comment, like, subscribe. Um, you know, and the, uh, my email address is, um, is also, uh, linked in my, um, my YouTube profile. So feel free to shoot an email if that's easier for you. And, um, yeah, so that's it.